Okay, so I thought as part of this video, we'll just have a quick recap on what is the difference between a proxy server and a, a routed connection. As we, you know, the reason why we'd want to be installing a McAfee gateway and understand the underlying technology helps us understand how the rules um, and how the, the process of McAfee gateway for being able to implement antivirus and application control and all that good stuff actually works so just a very quick recap I'm sure most of us know this when we are surfing the internet and we're not using a proxy server we're generally using some kind of natted connection through a router or a, a firewall uh, this works by setting the default gateway on your computer to that firewall or that router um, and this happens at the network LAN on the um, on the stack and it's generally within the um, IP header. The only thing that's really interested in um, when forwarding these internet packets is the uh, destination IP address along with the port number it's going to. But in terms of the actual payload, unless you're using um, a smart firewall that can inspect the, the packets of data, which in reality means it's starting to proxy the data, which is certainly not how it work with uh, domestic and home broadband connections. You know, a routed connection, there's no real way of being able to run any kind of rules based on the content of a website or what the website is, because it's only looking at the destination IP address um, and happening at the network layer. So with a proxy server, it's a bit different. It happens at the uh, application layer um, of this stack. And what this does is it's, of course, it's going to look at the um, the IP address so it knows where to, to proxy that data out to. But ultimately, what it's actually doing is looking at the payload of the packet. So in that payload, it's been able to look at what the HTTP request is. It's able to see the website that you're requesting. It can look at the metadata or the headers to see the kind of content that it's expecting to see. And then indeed, you can actually examine the content of that packet to make sure it matches what's been, um, what's been advertised as being requested. And it's because of... Uh, the level of examination at those HTTP headers, it can start to apply rules on individual websites. So it knows the website you're going to, therefore it's able to look into a database to see whether it is, a, is allowed and whether it isn't allowed. And because it's also looking at the kind of uh, MIME types of the data that's going through, it's able to you know, apply rules based on whether we're downloading certain file types. Again, because it's got access to the data, you know, antivirus scanning and, and etc., it's able to examine that payload data and work out whether it potentially um, has a signature that looks like a known virus. So there's a few problems with proxy servers. They, they require additional configuration on the client end unless you start to use transparent proxies, but in their native sense, they're gonna require some kind of configuration on Internet Explorer, probably through group policy. Um, or by through pack files. So, you know, set these proxy settings in Internet Explorer, but they don't necessarily follow through to other applications that use HTTP. For instance, there's more and more applications that are using web services, um, and the web service might not necessarily know where the proxy settings are. And if you stopped your default gateway on the PC from being able to access the internet, which of course you should if you're putting your stuff through proxy settings, then you may have to manually go in and um, add those additional settings within the application. It gets even more uh, complicated if you're checking to make sure that your user is authenticated. Um, your standalone applications may not be able to pass uh, Active Directory credentials, so you might need to create manual accounts or allow certain websites to pass through without being authenticated. And I have seen some applications that just cannot handle proxy servers. And in those instances, we have to uh, send them back through the default gateway. Um, and of course, there are standalone applications such as GoToMeetings and WebExes, which, you know, again, are connecting out over HTTP, but they're not actually using HTTP traffic. And they can cause you all sorts of problems. Okay, so that's the uh, quick recap over proxy servers and what they are. Um, and before we delve into the, the details. So let's go and install the web gateway software. Okay, so now we're gonna actually install the software. Um, this is really simple, follow the documentation um, on the McAfee website. It's not very difficult, but for completeness, I thought I'd quickly run through it. So we're gonna create a new virtual machine. Um, we're gonna to need to customize this virtual machine. Uh, so we've got my, we'll call it my gateway. 
uh, you'll need some storage. Okay, so we're going to make it in uh, the Virtual Machine 8 mode. I'm running a ESX, uh, ESXi 5.5. Uh, we need to use a Linux operating system, and as per the documentation, we're going to use an other 2.6 Linux 64-bit. Okay, it recommends a minimum of uh, two CPUs. Obviously, depending on how many users you've got connecting, you'll need to size accordingly. Memory recommends a minimum of four gig. Okay, so the documentation allows either the E1000 or the VMX net three and select my VM network okay iSCSI controller um, we have an ESI uh, parallel logic parallel uh, create a new virtual disk so I'm going to create um, a partition of 40 gig now the recommended size is a minimum of 200 gig and you are going to need that kind of space because you're going to want a large uh, area for caching so the more caching we have in there the faster performance for end users also you're going to need retention of logs uh, this may be for pushing up to EPO or the reporting server for being able to monitor activity um, and also for internal logging as well so we you would want to keep to the recommended size of, of 200 gig and keep it on the standard iSCSI 00 and hit complete so I've downloaded the ISO from the McAfee website. I'm just going to need to upload that into a data store so I can connect a virtual CD-ROM drive. So if we go to our storage, browser storage, ISOs, I'm going to upload. Okay, so now I can go to my server edit settings let's remove what we don't need and then our CD-ROM drive connect connect to power on okay so switch to our console and power on okay, so there are a number of different options you can uh, select for installation and we're going to go with the standard video console installation with configuration wizard. So here we're just going to see that it will overwrite uh, the data if we don't abort. Okay, so now we get to configure our network interface. Obviously, this is going to be a server. We don't really want to be using DHCP. So we answer no to this. Okay, so now we need to enter our IP address that will be used to communicate with our uh, McAfee gateway. So we're going to go 192.168.0.70. Um, and the sub mask we're going to be using. Obviously, the default gateway is going to be your firewall um, or your router, uh, where the McAfee gateway is going to be able to get access to the internet. And then you're going to need to give it a host name. Uh, this is not a fully qualified um, host name. You obviously need to set up your DNS. I want to confirm your settings it might be a good idea to take a screenshot of these so you've got something you can use to connect to and this is where we need to set a new root password and this is what we'll need to connect to the system for reconfiguration you have the option to allow uh, routing logging in by SSH this will all depend on your company's uh, security policy okay so you have two choices here we've using the default scheme a schema what will happen is it will allocate 40 gig in the um, OPT file a directory for storing your log files and um, well mainly your log files and then the rest of the partition will be given to the cache um, so as big a cache as possible now the alternative scheme schema um, what that does is the opposite round it will give 40 gig to the cache and leave the rest of the space 
to the OPT. Now, now the only time that I've come across a problem where I've run out of space on the OPT folder is where I've been doing some um, troubleshooting and had to turn logging up to a very high level. And you can imagine with multiple users with uh, verbose logging, this can very quickly fill up the partition. Um, but this was more to the fact that I didn't turn logging off once I captured what I needed um, and very quickly we ran out of space. So personally, I would go with having the bigger cache because the uh, but certainly if you've got a high number of users, the more cache, the better. Um, you really should be pushing out your log files to either a logging server or EPO where it will be uh, handle the long-term retention of data. So there's no reason why 40 gig should not be big enough. Okay, so that concludes our, our video on how to initially install the McAfee Gateway. I'm James Sillett and I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments or questions, you can contact me by any of the means shown below.